Septuagesima Jessima is the period of two and a half weeks leading up to Ash Wednesday, uh, including the Sundays of Septuagesima, Sexagesima, and Quinquagesima. During this time, the church wears violet, that is purple, vestments, uh, the vestments of penance, and the Alleluia and the Gloria in Excelsis sung at Mass um, aren't sung. Instead, we have a, a tract. The propers, the readings, and other chants uh, are help us prepare for the uh, penitential season um, in, in every way. We can decide what we want to do uh, and we can get ready for it. It certainly goes back to the sixth century when we find Pope Gregory the Great preaching in the Church of St. Lawrence on the Sunday of Septuagesima. St. Lawrence is the stational church uh, for that feast day, which means that in ancient times, the that's where the Pope would celebrate Mass. These stational churches have, of course, special uh, symbolic significance uh, connected with the feasts. So it was going on even, even as far back as that. That is the year 590 or 591. It's, in fact, older than Ash Wednesday in the church's calendar. And it's paralleled in the calendars of the Eastern churches who have, uh, again, three Sundays before the start of Lent. Um, in which they progressively give up different kinds of food in preparation for the, uh, the penance. Sejuriasma was is not to be found in the 1970 calendar prepared by um, Annibale Bugnini, um, and he explains why that they, they got rid of it. Now I'll just read uh, what he says in his book, uh, The uh, Reform of the Roman Liturgy. There was disagreement on the suppression of the Septuagesima season. Some saw these weeks as a step towards Easter. On one occasion, Pope Paul VI compared the complex made up of Septuagesima, Lent, Holy Week and the Easter Triduum to the bells calling people to Sunday Mass. The ringing of them an hour, half hour, fifteen and five minutes before the time of Mass has a psychological effect and prepares the faithful materially and spiritually for the celebration of the liturgy. Then, however, the view prevailed that there should be a simplification. It was not possible to restore Lent to its full importance without sacrificing Septuagesima, which is an extension of Lent. This is very much part of the thinking behind uh, many of the reforms of the Novus Ordo, that anything which prepares for or anticipates or remembers, or recalls or adds to a, a season, a feast, a, a practice, uh, should be chopped off in the, in the uh, interests of simplicity. In fact, the wisdom of the church has over the ages been that we need to prepare for feasts, we need to remember them afterwards with octaves um, and other celebrations, um, otherwise we don't get the full effect of them. We can't let them enter into our, into our lives um, as fully as we otherwise could. So that's why we still celebrate in the extraordinary form and there are many calls for it to be restored in the ordinary form as well. The Second Vatican Council's decree on the liturgy Sacrosanctum Concilium um, doesn't mention Septuagesima, but it does talk about the seasons of the church, of which Septuagesima is obviously one. Um, and what it says is this, the liturgical year is to be revised so that the traditions and customs and discipline of the sacred seasons shall be preserved or restored to suit the conditions of modern times. Their specific character is to be retained so that they would duly nourish the piety of the faithful who celebrate the mysteries of Christian redemption and above all the pastoral mystery. So there's no indication at all they had in mind uh, the abolition of the season of church adjustment. On the contrary, there's every indication that they saw it as one of the seasons of the church. All the seasons of the church is, are, are, are to be fostered. It's obviously a part of the preparation for the Paschal mystery, so that's another reason to, to consider it important. Yeah.